Hi everyone, it's Darlene. Welcome back for another card video. For today's cards, I made three of them and I used stencils and embossing paste to create a really cool 3D look. I'm gonna create both the bear and the gopher on camera. So here is the embossing paste I'm using. It's Wendy Vecchi. And I have two stencils by My Favorite Things. Uh, one is called Small Checkerboard and the other one is called On the Diagonal. So uh, for the bear, the checkerboard, I'm using basic gray cardstock and black soot ink. And for the gopher, I'm using crumb cake cardstock and walnut stain ink. Since I'm gonna be inking up the entire front of the cardstock, I'm going to tape it with the surgical tape on the back of the stencil to make sure that all of my cardstock is exposed. So I'm gonna apply this Distress ink, this black set, with a foam applicator, and I'm using my rectangular one because it's just bigger. And it does take a little bit of time to cover this whole thing, uh, but because I'm using the rectangular one, I'm getting more color every time I put it down. So I'm kind of pressing down and kind of twisting a little bit. You could, of course, use the round uh, applicator or a sponge dauber if you want to. It's just faster to use this bigger one. All right, so I'm gonna take this off right away, and I'm gonna leave the surgical tape on there because I'll use it when I put my stencil back on for the paste. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move over to the gopher card. I'm gonna do the same thing, adhering the stencil on the back and then covering it with the walnut stain, and then I'll remove it. Now I used Distress inks here. You could use any ink that you want. The reason why I use Distress inks is because they're very easy to clean and they come right off the stencil. Moving on to the second step, I'm gonna take my stencil and place it back on my pattern. And for the checkerboard, I'm gonna move it up and to the right just a little bit. And so I'm just gonna kind of hold it and make sure that I have a position. I'm checking all of my top squares and my bottom squares to make sure that I have the same amount of gray showing on the top and on the right side in each of the squares. And then I'll just, once I get it positioned, then I'll press it down because my surgical tape is already on my cardstock and it's facing upward. So I just place it down and press it. Now I'm gonna apply my paste with a pellet knife and I find it easiest to get the paste on the back of your pellet knife, like the bottom of it and you spread it uh, basically like cake icing. And um, I really enjoy doing this. I spend a lot of time and I go sort of slow because I, I don't know, there's just something relaxing about spreading this. And I just want to make sure that I have the same level of paste across my whole stencil. So I don't want thin areas and thick areas. I want it to be consistent. And I also personally like it to be pretty smooth. So I try to smooth it all out so I don't have much texture, but that's really a personal preference. You wanna take the stencil off immediately after you're done applying the paste. So I'm just gonna pick off this uh, stencil here really carefully, and uh, you can see once I take it off how cool this looks with the black behind the white boxes. So I'm gonna put this off to the side and show you how I clean it up because there's so much leftover paste that you don't wanna waste. So I took my pellet knife and I cleaned up my craft mat and then I'm gonna uh, take the palette knife and go along the top of the stencil. You can see how much extra. It's kind of deceiving. It looks like it's just a really thin layer with not much, much paste, but it's really an amazing amount of paste that's still on there that's reusable. You just wanna make sure that your craft mat is clean or you might get some of it onto your paste and back in your bottle. So just make sure it's clean. And then finally, lift up the stencil and there's still yet more paste underneath that. So just pick it up with your palette knife and then immediately wash your stencil and your palette knife and your craft mat. I don't use any soap, I just use plain water. Okay, for the other one, I'm actually only gonna move it to the side. So I'm not moving it up and down, just to the side. So about half of my stripes are underneath my stencil and uh, half are showing through the pattern of the stencil. And I'll just press it down since my tape is already facing up and then I'll apply the paste in the same way um, with this stencil. Again, just making sure that I'm consistent and I have the same level of paste across the whole thing, and then I just like to smooth it out at the very end. And then again, you wanna take it off right away and then just rinse off your stencil with some water. Now this one's really cool, so when I take it off, you'll see that the stripes are all white, but over time, the walnut stain, for some reason, uh, will start to show through the paste. And that's why I have that kind of um, three different colors showing on my final card. I tried drying the walnut stain first before applying the paste and it still 
uh, crept through the color of the paste. The black soot did not do it, so I'm not sure how to explain it, it's a little strange, but I kinda liked how part of the white paste had that walnut stain color to it, so um, I was happy with it and just left it as is. All right, I'm gonna work on the bear now. I'm using the All Inside set by Ellen Hudson. I've also got the matching dies. This is called So To Speak by Clearly Basada. It just has a lot of speech bubbles in it. And then my Stitched Rectangles by Simon Says Stamp. Now, I've already stamped it uh, onto some Nina cardstock with Memento ink, and I keep this template inside um, my die packaging. And so I'm just gonna center it right on top of my stamped image, and then I'll tape my template down to the cardstock. And then I'll take my die, which I can't see, and that's why I have to go through this process. But when you drop it in, it just hits right inside the groove and sticks there, and so you know you're cutting it exactly where your template is. And then when I pop it out, you'll see that it's perfectly cut right around the edge of the image. I'm gonna quickly color this bare. I'm gonna keep it pretty consistent with the rest of the card, which is a basic gray color. And so I'm going with my cool gray. Sorry, I'm a little focused too far in, which is why it's a little bit blurry. I'm gonna color the edge and just kind of around the arms with the C4. And then I'm moving in closer with the C1 toward the center of the bear. And then for the middle part, I'm gonna take my zero colorless blender and I'm just gonna go over the edge of that C1 and kind of push a little bit toward the edge, but not too much, because I don't wanna mute my colors. But you can see as I use this zero, that hard edge of my C1 uh, marker disappears and it kind of fades to white as it hits his belly. And then I noticed that the arms needed a little uh, darker area where the cut edge is. It's a little confusing with that cut edge not being exactly on the line. So I'm just gonna add some C4 underneath there because you would get a shadow where his arms are and then blend it out with the C1 and then finally with the zero. And that will be the coloring of the bear. And I have this red heart that I cut out of some glitter paper. I'm gonna put some uh, two-way glue pen on the back. And to get it underneath his arms, what I normally do is kind of pop up his arms with my fingernail, just enough to kind of slide that heart in and then just press it down. I've already cut my rectangle. It's the third one in, in the set at two and five eighths by three and seven eighths. I'm gonna put this in the misty and position my stamp, and then I'll stamp it with some Hero Arts um, black ink. And I put some Scotch foam tape on the back of my bear and placed it right next to the sentiment. And then I'm gonna ground him with the same colors I used to color him. So here's the C4, and you can see I'm just drawing kind of some random lines and dots. And then I'll take my C1 and thicken it out a little bit, making sure that I go over all the edges. And this is a good thing to do so it doesn't look like your subject is sort of floating. It really kind of grounds it so that it looks realistic. So that'll be it for the bear card. I'm gonna move back over to the gopher card. I'm using the Go For It set by Gerda Steiner Designs, Coffee Craze by Mint Owl Studio. And then this time I'm gonna use the stitched circles by Simon Says Stamp. I've just laid down my circle die so I could stamp my cup with some memento ink. And I'm gonna color it with some blue-green markers. I'm gonna take my darkest and kind of flick upward um, from the side of my cup with the BG13. And I'm gonna make them longer on the left, shorter on the right. Um, I'm also gonna color the back and the top and the bottom a little bit too. Now once I get that first layer, I'm gonna take my BG11 and I'm gonna go uh, flick upward in the same sort of uh, motion that I did on the BG13. Um, but I'm kind of going back and forth a little bit more because I do wanna make sure that, that li those lines in the BG13 are sort of blended out a little bit. So I am doing a, having a little more of a thicker hand um, with thicker lines. And then finally, after I'm done with that middle color, I'm gonna take the BG10, which is a super light color, and I'm just gonna kind of go over the area in the middle just to make sure that I have everything colored. Um, and then for the handle, I just quickly uh, colored in some BG13 and BG11 until it was covered. And now the next step, I took a colorless blender. I used my chisel tip. And I kind of regretted this because the first time I used the brush tip and it came out better. So I'm kind of going back and forth. And what I'm doing is I'm adding that you know light reflection that you get on the side of a cup. And so I'm kind of going back and forth and it came out too thick. So I kind of let it dry to see what it was gonna look like. And uh, then I took my brush tip and I kind of went over back and forth to blend it out a little bit more. So if I was gonna do it again, I would make a thinner line with the brush tip. 
I've already stamped my gopher and the glasses come in the set and I think it's an absolute necessity every time you stamp this little guy because the glasses just make him look so adorable. So I'm basically using the same technique as I did with the bear. I'm gonna start on the outside with a darker color and move inward. You can see I had to move his uh, forehead down a little bit uh, with the darker color. And now I'm just doing the same thing on his body. I'm working in parts so that it doesn't dry too quickly. And then for his nose, I'm gonna color it with a Copic liner, multi-liner, it's a 0.3 liner. You could use that 110 Copic marker, but this is much more precise. So I just colored his whole nose with that. And uh, then I'm gonna cut this out by hand and I'm gonna cut out the hole that he's coming out of. And I'm gonna position this over the cup so it looks like his hands are kind of on the cup. And then I'm gonna make sure that my circle is in the right spot and then I'll put some tape down to hold it and run it through the big shot. And by the way, off camera, I added some glossy accents to his glasses. Um, and I'm sorry, again, I'm too close. I don't know what the problem is. Nothing's changed, so it's, it's really a user error here. But I'm just grounding my cup now with the W3 and W1. So these are warm grays because this card is much warmer than my bear card, which is more on the cool side. So I put some Stampin' Up! Dimensionals behind my gopher and put them right there on top of the cup. And then I'm gonna take some early espresso ink and stamp my sentiment on some uh, white cardstock. And I wanted this to be pointed, so I'm gonna measure one quarter of an inch from the top, one quarter of an inch from the bottom. And then I eyeballed the center and marked it. And then I cut um, each of those out on each side. So I'm very precise with my measurements. You could just sort of eyeball this if you want. But I wanted it to be pointed because it sort of was in line with the pattern of my stencil. So I did that on both sides. Now, as far as cutting back these stencil pieces, you could take a scissor and it'll cut that embossing paste right off really easily. And I cut them to be about an eighth of an inch on all sides. Um, so that I would have a white mat on my card base. So I'm adhering it to my card base with the ATG tape runner. And then I'm gonna take some Tombow Mono Multi Glue. Since this is a textured surface, I usually use liquid glue in that case. I'm just gonna center it, kind of counting my squares to make sure it's in the middle. And that's it for the bear card. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I cut back my um, panel to an eighth of an inch mat on all sides, take my Tombow glue and put it in the center, and then I put some scotch foam tape actually on the bottom of my sentiment because I wanted it to pop up a little bit, and I put it right there underneath the coffee cup. And that finishes up all the cards. So you can see the walnut stayed coming through the uh, embossing paste. I think it looks really cool, kind of like a latte coffee. And then here is the bear. Um, you can see how cute this little guy looks and all the colors match up. And then I also created another one with the Seamus Sheep set by Jane's Doodles. And I did the same stencil on the bottom with some pink pirouette paper and the white paste with some black set underneath. So anyway, those are the cards. I hope you enjoy this. I hope you'll try it for yourself. I would use a uh, detailed pattern stencil. I think you're gonna get the best results uh, from something detailed. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.